Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Let's go around real fast and introduce ourselves, and then uh, we're going to turn it over to Roy Ingram to talk about mechatronics at Sierra College. So, Steve Dykus, I guess I'm the host and or the uh, facilitator of this meeting. I'm Roy Ingram, Sierra College of Mechatronics. <laughs> Jeff Briggs, uh, Regional Director, Advanced Manufacturing for the North Region. Pete DeLosa, uh, Engineering Design, Golden Sierra High School. Mike Bastine, Regional Director, Advanced Manufacturing for the South Central Coast. Alan Braggins, Statewide Director for Advanced Manufacturing. I'm Lely Vandeninda. I'm a professor of structural engineering at UC San Diego, and I'm also um, a co-founder for this company called eGrove Education, and we do education technology. So I'm going to talk to you guys today a little bit about something we've developed. Welcome. Thanks. And uh, Todd Wold with Tahoe Trekking Unified. I'm the manager of college and career readiness, which includes career technical education and adult education. Awesome. Well, Roy? You ready to do it? Sure, sure. let me screen? know. Yeah, I'm going to try and share a screen and uh, see if my video will stay present and all that good stuff. So, see if this works. Can you all see my screen okay? I can. Yes. All right, perfect. Um, so, Sierra College Mechatronics. Um, Really, I've, I'm pretty new to this department uh, and teaching overall. I've spent 20 years in industry um, at uh, TSI Semiconductors, which was once NEC in Roseville, um, as an electronic technician. And then I moved into the realm of uh, um, the, what we call the engineering, um, equipment engineering and uh, support group, which was responsible for upgrades and system controls and, and repairs and long downs um, is what we call them in, in industry. So a lot of hands-on experience. So I joined uh, Sierra College um, in uh, 2018 uh, for the fall semester. And so I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of what our mechatronics program is, some pay scales and things. And then um, the uh, each course within our program and also uh, play a little video for you. So um, maybe I'll start with the video um, let me grab that real quick. I didn't have it up here, but uh, it is on YouTube. So you all can share this um, in the future um, with anybody. If there's high schools or, or those of you that are teaching, that want to feel free to. Don't forget, you have to unshare and reshare. Say that again, I need to unshare and reshare. So we, can't, so we can see the video, you have to select the video screen. Perfect. Yeah, that's right. I selected PowerPoint last time. All right, we'll try this again. Unshare, reshare, and we'll go to Mechatronics. Thank you. And Roy, can you type in the chat the uh, URL for us? Yes. Right, I'm not hearing the uh, the audio. You're not hearing the audio I'm hearing? Is that what you're saying? Sorry about that. Is that uh, when you when you go to share in the lower portion of the share screen, you have to click a button that says um, optimize for audio. Optimize for audio in the lower screen. All right. That's before you share. So you're gonna have to unshare. Okay. Thank you. Then go to reshare. Sorry for the delay. I use no the big blue button in my classes. So um, got it. I see optimize screen sharing for video and share computer soon. Got it. Thank you all.
mechatronics is like robotics. You've got your electrical, your mechanical, and you got some computer aspects integrated into that. For one of the classes, you go ahead and you do a bunch of different stuff on the computer, all the systems, how to go ahead and configure certain settings, as well as take a computer apart, put it back together. It's a very broad field. It involves electronics, mechanical systems, it involves programming, and it all applies in a lot of industries. They get a chance to learn about things in a very tangible, hands-on way. The people in the program do everything they can to help you, not only in your schooling, but your overall career. Where mechatronics is going and, and really how rapidly the world is adopting the ideas and concepts of mechatronics is really exciting. You can't go anywhere and not see mechatronic systems. There's over 110 community colleges in the state of California, and we're really the only one that offers a program in mechatronics. In the mechatronics program, we have a three-course certificate that is really fundamental training. Our real full-blown certificate is eight courses. The tuition for that is less than $1,500, and local employers know and trust that that certificate means that people have all the fundamentals as well as some advanced skills, and so they're ready to come in and learn the specifics for that job in that industry. Harrison Bruno is a manufacturing company right here in Roseville. It started out as a small job shop and it really grew into one of the leaders in the industry for printing. The mechatronics department does such a great job not only preparing for the actual skills, they also don't forget the 21st century skills. That is one of the biggest assets that we have here at this community college is instructors that are not only invested in educating the students but also into providing a career path and help them develop a lot of other skills additional to the mechatronics and the electronics and the automation that we are teaching. We sell dental equipment, install it, repair it. The medical and dental fields are great fields to get into because they never go away. The mechatronics program sets people up to learn and keep learning, and you can use it when you go out into the industry. Sierra Pacific Industries is a third generation family owned company. We manufacture force products for consumers, industry, housing, building. One of the most important things about the program is that if we have a need, we can communicate with the cost directly. If it's very specific, like working with 40 voltage, we can actually come to college and say, hey, we need to kind of fine tune this a little bit. And by being able to do that, that creates a whole different type of environment as far as getting a student prepared to really come into the workplace. My biggest goal right now is to start working in the field. Because of a program like this, it fully qualifies me for a ton of industrial positions. Some of our graduates coming out of the mechatronics program got hired by Circus Delay, and they're in charge of making those performances happen. One of the most exciting things about this company is that we're international and we have multiple offices. One case in particular where he has gotten to travel to all kinds of countries for supportive installations, training people how to use our equipment, troubleshooting, going on jobs where they're installing or doing repairs. If you like building things, if you like working with your hands, there is a job. We cannot produce enough technicians to meet the demand from even our local employers. Just following the base route in high school and in college College isn't going to get you into what you want. If you really want a cool job, take every opportunity that's in front of you. If you want that longevity, you hope that they find something that they're passionate about and they'll be really successful. Just say, maybe not what I want to do exactly, but if I try it, then I'll know for sure. All right, so you have it, have it there. I'm going to post a link here in a second to that video. Um, so really, the idea here is uh, our hands-on program, which obviously in this in this realm that we're in now, it's um, we've we've been impacted greatly by um, the uh, this COVID. And so really, I, I want to share a couple of things. You saw you heard it from the students there. You heard it from faculty and local employers and, and really that's what we're about is making those connect because I think really we need to link from high schools all the way to employment and um, that's one of the reasons why I came on board is because I had great instructors that helped me get an internship that turned into a 20-year career. I don't think there's anything better you can do for students than be that liaison, that connection point and so um, I'm passionate about that and so I helped with internships, develop relationships. The cool thing is as well is NEC Electronics is one of the biggest um, 
automation manufacturers in this Placer County area, and it employed over 2,500 people at one point. Right now, it's down significantly, down to a couple of hundred, maybe 400 people um, due to layoffs and, and automation and also a lot of different climates that we're in. But they do still hire technicians. Um, they still are operational. But what that also means is that there's a lot of other people out in industry that I have connection to that I've worked with over the years. Uh, down at the uh, railway, Siemens, um, I have connections there. Um, you name it, there's people that I know. And if I went to Kratos, um, which is air defense, there's a couple of my colleagues that I worked with for 20 years there. Just about every rock I turn over or industry I poke into, there's somebody I've known. So I think that's a great um, feature for our program. And I think all the other faculty really believe in that. Um, as far as the presentation, I have a little quick presentation here to give you. Um, so hopefully I can share that a little bit more streamlined in this mode. Give me a second. All right. And all right, are you able to see my uh, slides show here at this point? Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, so our program really, what is Mechatronics? Um, you know, the idea of critical thinking versus non-critical thinking. All of you in education know about this. I just want to mention it because it's something that's interlaced throughout our program. Um, really, the why in mechatronics, it's because we've gone from back in the 1800s of millwrights and boilermakers and machinists to a combined um, uh, skill set of all of those different um, realms. And I think that uh, integrating in the best way we can is not to be specific to an industry, but to be broad in our, um, in our education path so that whatever they choose, whatever their interest is, there's a fit for them. Um, so you can see that, you know, yesterday's specialist, you had all the different mechanical trades, the electrical trades, really mechatronics is, is incorporating all of that into the skill set. So really the, the labor model that I see for the mechatronic skill set is combining the mechanical specialties or the electrical specialties into sort of a, a skill set that, that covers quite a broad range. Um, so, and hopefully you can cater that with the flexibility that's at a community college and so it's what Mechatronics offers. We encourage our students to go over to advanced manufacturing or welding and take some classes there. Also have 21st century skills like writing, technical writing. So um, just because our program has the, uh, the defined seven classes, um, we actually have added an eighth this semester or actually in the fall semester. I'll mention that in the future, but really the idea is to have the skill sets needed for today's industries. Um, and really the technicians or intro level engineering needs motivation, curiosity, critical thinking. And again, this is interlaced throughout all of our program. Um, the information evolution, right? We have all the computer aided design, solid, solid modeling, finite element analysis, all of those things combined into a program is really beneficial and it's what we're bringing to um, Sierra College's mechatronics program. Um, we have a lot of mechanical and electrical engineering functions integrated into the program, even though we stick with algebraic and a few trigonomic uh, functions in our program, we can still teach um, some three phase um, voltage levels and, and give them the structure to understand it and give them what uh, one of our students has called an unfair advantage when they went on to engineering school and uh, they really had worked with it, three phase power in a lab environment and the math was no longer daunting. So it's, um, it's interesting, once you have some basics, the, the distances you can go. Um, and why mechatronics? It's everywhere, okay? Whether it's a brewery or whether it's a semiconductor factory or Sierra Pacific milling the woods or up at SunSuite, uh, uh, packaging fruit up in Yuba City. All those places have the mechatronics, and so really we're not trying to focus on one group. Um, we've asked about employers, you know, utility companies. Um, two of my prior bosses work for the city of Roseville, and I've taken my students out there. Their, their technician level, intro level pay is one of the highest in the area at about $124,000 a year. Um, obviously, the, the turnover is not real high there, but um, again, water agencies, utilities are great, public utilities are a great place for uh, jobs, and they usually are pretty well compensated. 
both in uh, your salary and in benefits. So, and then food and beverage, um, the, the asterisk here, it means that they've hired actually more than just one student from us, but all of these uh, are just some local employers um, from semiconductors, TSI is where I used to work, um, Keysight, HP, formerly H HP, uh, Micron, across the country has hired students from us. Um, we have Ag, Tamra, one of our students just went there and is working as a field service technician for uh, sorting equipment from uh, products coming off the field of uh, tomato processing and also fruits. Um, so a lot, a lot of that in incorporates the visual aspect, the A to D conversions, all that we cover in our program. Um, if you wanna look at uh, other employers for industrial robotics, Amazon, one of our students is actually the manager of five Amazon factories for distribution in the uh, Northern California area. He did that in two years. He has an associate's degree in mechatronics. And again, it's the this type of students that come into our program that really try hard and push themselves are ones that end up in those positions. Um, you name it, there's there's all of these, these companies have hired uh, students of ours. And so I'm just displaying them here. Um, and you can take from it what you want, um, hit them up, but I guarantee you if you call any one of them about uh, our program, they will give you uh, probably some pretty good signals that our students have been success successful in their, their business. Um, and I, just a few more here. Um, I think Mason Sage mentioned, mentioned Cirque du Soleil. They um, rank us in one of the top three community colleges in United States for um, employing in the technical realm. So um, that's where they come to Sierra College. Um, Tony Osladell, you saw them in the video. He um, works with them directly um, to get the right candidates that they need. Um, Sugar Bowl also hires from us, Squaw Valley. We actually have a uh, certificate that's catered towards ski resorts um, because there's a lot of them in the area and a lot of the, the skills that they need weren't the whole mechatronics program. They needed to understand some automation and they needed to understand some mechanics. And so we created a certificate specifically for um, the ski resorts in the area. So that's been really beneficial. Um, a few more here of other companies, but really I think you saw in the video, the, the other aspect that these, these companies are part of an advisory committee. And if you're looking for um, a changing mechatronics program that grows with the economy and also moves with the, the, demands in industry, then you need a advisory committee, both of the employers and of your past students that have jobbed out. Um, with that kind of feedback, you will have a successful program um, like we have had, and hopefully your students will have careers like I have had. Uh, for our certificate, there's the three classes, the science of electronics, the fundamentals of electronics, and then mechanical, uh, mechatronics processes and materials. That covers a nine unit uh, skill certificate that was uh, adequate for um, ski lift um, mechanics. Um, they got them sort of their feet off the ground and into uh, a higher paying job from just your routine uh, clearing small errors on, on PLCs and things, pushing the reset button. Um, and then our associate's degree um, is part of this seven program. And I said seven course program. Um, we've added an eighth, which is uh, Design Engineering Support, DES 3D. And um, that has um, another three units added to this. So we have a total of a 27 unit um, a curriculum for the Mechatronics Associates degree. Um, obviously the general ed must be completed for that, but you can also just get the certificate if you like. Um, really, uh, I have a, a few of our different classes broken down here, but for sake of time, I feel like I've already taken more than has been given me. Um, but Steve, if you want me to break down any one of those classes, um, I can and sort of outline what they what they are. Um, let's leave this up and let questions Roy, come. This, Roy, at this point, I think you've done an outstanding job of presenting what's going on with mechatronics at Sierra College. And again, this again. whole Thing that Jeff and I started a couple of weeks ago, inviting different community college programs to come and present. Also help the local high school educators to be aware and make them more knowledgeable so as they counsel their students on the next steps. And so Roy, I think you've done a great job. 
Can we open it up for questions for just a moment before we go on to well, any questions for Roy about his program? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Roy, this is Mike Basting. Uh, what's your funding source or your, your streams of funding for the, the class, the classes? Um, we've had some strong workforce money that has allowed us to do that. Uh, we've had some great people that have worked with us on that, Carol Pepper Kittredge. And um, since I've been on board only about a year, two years, I don't have a whole lot of more information than that. But that's been one of the big things is, is we, we already have a program that has about um, $1.2 million worth of lab equipment and calibration equipment, 4 to 20 milliamp control systems and pressure sensors and so, and, and really the trainers, in fact, I'll jump to this trainer here. This is one of our uh, Keystone courses of uh, MEC. It's a, about a $12,000 trainer that integrates um, a PLC and then uh, it, it sorts pucks, um, plastic puck and a metal puck. There's a conveyance system here. There's a, a pneumatic uh, arm that articulates between uh, this load station and the conveyor and then a couple of bins. And, and really it teaches them about um, all of the, the basics of industrial electronics, Boolean logic, switch circuits, motors. And so this is really one of our, our best fundamental courses that students can come into not knowing what a wire is or what um, uh, automation system is. And by the end of the class, the semester, they're programming this, this uh, system. The other cool thing is that um, since I'm still sharing my screen, I, we actually, one of the students actually developed a simulation for this um, SMC device um, or, or automation system. And so the students can actually program in a simulated environment, which has saved us. And an actual software was developed by a student, which I think was, again, just speaks to the caliber. It's not just us, it's also we get some pretty cool students through here. Any other questions for Roy right now? Uh, yeah, this is Pete. I, I'll jump in with um, uh, this is somewhere between a question and a comment, I guess. But just that um, I'd love to talk more with you, Roy, offline if you're interested. One of my hopes for my classes next year is to get my kids uh, a little bit more exposure to things, um, opportunities after high school that are out there. And I'd love to, to put you on my list to come in and talk to the class. And maybe if it's possible, we could even do some kind of a project together or something intro oh. to all of this. You bet, Pete. In fact, that's my, my favorite thing is I, I realized that over the years being in industry, by the time I'm done working on the electronics and systems, I get home and I would want to work on projects and I just didn't have the energy. But now that I'm teaching, it actually gives me the environment where, hey, I want to build something and I want to inspire somebody else. It actually has, has been really rewarding. So I would cool. that anybody else that wants to do that, um, shoot me a message and I will uh, be glad to, to join you on that. Awesome. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming on and presenting. Yeah. Well, let's move on to our next presenter. Lely, would you introduce yourself? She um, is a co-founder of eGrove Education. They've got a uh, spatial is app, something that I've been fooling around the last few days. And one of the challenges I used to have in the classroom, trying to teach students how to move from a 2D environment to a 3D environment. So Lely, Introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about it and give us a demo. I want to see it again. Sure. So thank you guys for including me on your, your call. Um, I, again, uh, my name is Lely and I am a structural engineer and I teach at UC San Diego. And um, I don't know, it's been at least five, six years, um, but a colleague of mine in the mechanical engineering department and I uh, recognized that some of our students were having trouble seeing things in 3D. And uh, we looked into the literature and there's a lot of research that's been done that shows that uh, spatial visualization skills are a learnable skill. We just don't teach it really anymore in, in K through 12, except for maybe in the courses that, like, uh, that you guys offer. But in the general education, if we don't have like uh, pre-engineering type programs or whatever, then they often don't get these uh, spatial skills. And so we developed an app um, to teach uh, 3D spatial visualization skills uh, using a sketching on a touch screen. So there's an automatic grading algorithm and we want to keep it engaging to the students. So I am going to share, I guess, um, 
I'll share my desktop right now. And so I'm gonna go through a short presentation just to give you like a little overview. And then I'll jump into showing you a little demo of the app, which um, in the end, I'll give you instructions for how you guys can get access to the app for free and test it out and play with it. Um, I do wanna say that Roy's presentation just beforehand just demonstrates the need for the ability for students in any kind of mechatronics or manufacturing or anything to be able to uh, create um, CAD drawings and go from 2D to 3D. I'm currently teaching a class right now at UCSD that's just introducing SOLIDWORKS and AutoCAD. I'm also very hands-on like your program, Roy, and it's been a struggle to take away the 3D printing and laser cutting and everything that we do and just go to a software-based class. But, um, but one thing that's great is this app that uh, is really good for remote instruction. So I'll, it, it, it served its purpose. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the app um, and just go over a little bit about the content and those of you that um, are teaching pre-engineering or um, some of these skills, you'll, you'll recognize uh, the orthographics and isometrics that we're teaching them. Um, I'm, I'm gonna talk very briefly about some best practices we've learned about how to use this app in the classroom. Um, and then I'll end with, you know, how to, to get a free teacher account. Um, so I have a video. The sound is annoying, so I'm going to mute it if I can. Um, where is it? Well. <laughs> I can't find the mute. Sorry, I couldn't get rid of the sound, but um, and we will get into the app and show you sort of some improvements we made since that video was made. Um, but basically, um, you know, spatial visualization, you all know because you, te you teach in this field, but it's the ability to visualize and manipulate shapes in your mind. Um, and sketching has been shown to be an important part of spatial skills. So the act of sketching actually improves your spatial skills. Um, but as I said before, it's not typically taught. And so Sometimes, so what we found is um, a lot of the curriculum is like moving away from having hand sketching and doing orthographics and isometrics before jumping into the software. I know I teach on the quarter system and I have 10 weeks to teach them SOLIDWORKS and AutoCAD, but I still take the time for a few weeks to teach um, hand sketching and spatial visualization skills as a fundamental precursor before getting into CAD. And um, you know, and you know, there's a wide range of skills. I'm sure you see some of your students who just can, it's like riding a bike, they can see things in 3D and it's not a problem. But there are, are quite a few students that struggle with it. And those are the students that tend to maybe not um, stay in STEM fields, tend to drop out or maybe have lower GPAs. And just a, a simple uh, course is, is enough to bring them up to the an equal playing field. So that's sort of how we got into this. Um, and I wanna, I, as I mentioned before, the app is good for remote learning. Um, and it's very engaging and fun. And uh, it's autom it has an automatic grading algorithm, so you don't have to spend the time uh, grading sketches. It's actually done automatically and they get feedback right away. So let me stop sharing this and see if I can get this to work. Um, hmm. Yep, there we go. So I will open the, the app. So this is the app and I guess I will get start with the introduction. Um, this just basically uh, shows the different buttons. Um, the introduction just is a module to get them to understand um, the grading algorithm and the reward system. 
So one of the things we found is that with this app, we gave a, a, an ability to hint or take a peek at the solution. And uh, students were, some students were trying really hard and being persistent and trying to sketch things. Other students were just peeking at the solution right away without even trying. So obviously those didn't, students didn't learn and we recognize this because they didn't improve their spatial skills in a post-test. And so we kind of started this reward system to encourage people to continue to try as many times as they want to get the solution um, to teach them a little bit about persistence. Um, so that's the, a little bit about this. It talks about our grading algorithm and I, um, I can show you that uh, demo it. And then it just uh, starts walking students through just how to use the interface. So they first start by sketching, they submit the, the yellow button and our new grading results shows you, you know, what percentage of the, of the assignment you got correct. Um, and so you can see if we go to the menu at the top, the intro just teaches you about uh, the grid a little bit and just gets you into drawing things. So when you go back to the main, main uh, menu, um, when you get into, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I was already practicing my demos. So um, I'm trying to get you to the first page. This is uh, our entry level um, ass assignments and it's about uh, visualizing things rotating in two dimensions. And um, so when you go to the next assignment, I've already done that one. If you look in the top right corner, it's asking you to rotate this object 90 degrees um, counterclockwise, which is a positive if you know right hand rule. And so you end up sketching it and you can draw um, either with a stylish or something and submit it. And you can see that I got it wrong. Um, so the grading tells me that 75% um, or so of my solutions are correct. I'm missing some and I have some incorrect lines. So I can continue to retry it and try to take a look at what went wrong. I'm sure those, most of you know what's going wrong. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually submit it again to show you that if I take a hint, it shows me, it's, it's, uh, we're working on this a little bit feedback, but it's showing me that, because um, our buffer is quite, quite, quite large, that that top line is not correct. Um, and again, the feedback, we've been working on getting better feedback for the students um, about what's wrong. So I will continue sketching and realize that I made a mistake here somewhere and I'm gonna erase and go back to my pencil and in increase the lines. And so one thing you can see here, um, let's submit it. Well, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit cause I already know that I am out of the buffer there and go back to drawing. So you can see I'm actually doing this on my phone. So um, you can also zoom in if you need to. And you can see right now that I have a stray mark right there. So let's, uh, let's actually submit it and see what it says. And it says, great job, but you notice I only got two stars because I took a hint. And so I lost a star. So um, if I continue, um, when I go back to the main menu, you'll see the number of stars I get. Um, so that's 2D rotations. If you go to the menu at the top right, you can see that the problems get progressively harder. Sometimes the rotating um, reference point, which is the yellow dot, is in the middle, or sometimes it's even off the, the shape. And so it, it just gets progressively harder. One thing to note is the, are the, the last three questions in every module. So in this case, it's 29, 30, and 31. Uh, these are what we call test questions. So if you look at the top, it says test questions, no hints or peaks allowed. So this, we kind of go back to a medium level difficulty and we have the students do this, but they're not allowed to take a hint or peak. So it's almost like a, a, a test question basically. And so those are all in the last three. So um, I think I'll get into some of the if I get into some of the assignments that are more like um, regular CAD drafting, this is called ortho. So basically you're given an isometric view and you need to draw the um, orthographic projections, the front, right, and top views. And you can see that we, we talk a little bit about miter lines and construction lines um, to get them to understand the correct spacing of how to lay out their um, and we, we also introduced the concept of hidden lines um, when you've got something behind the scenes happening. Um, and then we get into them, we kind of uh, scaffold them into getting uh, the solution. So this is quite easy. It already shows you the blue face of the plane that you wanna draw. And it gives you these three starting dots that allows you to quickly draw that shape. 
and submit. Good job. And so you can see that they get much harder where you might have like, num I already started this one, but um, number 11, where I'm trying to draw the, the three views for this particular assignment, the front, right, and side view. So I'm not gonna get into this. We can submit it. And you can see that I'm missing a lot of the lines. Um, most of my lines are correct, um, but I have a, a, um, many that are missing. So I can continue to, so I'll, I'll show you a peek at the solution. If I press peek, it shows you what the final solution is supposed to be. Um, the blue lines are what I'm missing. The green lines are my correct lines. And you can see I had a stray mark over on uh, that red mark over there. So it's the type of feedback you get. So after we do that, we go the other direction. This is called 2D to 3D. This is where we actually start with the orthographic projections and we move towards them creating the isometric. And so you can see that we have some trickier ones. This is, a, if you look at the top um, image, we're supposed to create that. If I submit it, I'm just cheating right now because I don't have a lot of time and peek at the solution. That's what the solution is supposed to look like. So, um, so without getting into all the modules, uh, we do have, I guess I'm gonna get into a few of them. We do do slopes and curves. And so uh, it's still dealing with isometrics and orthographic um, projections going from one way to the other. And it's dealing with curved surfaces and slope surfaces. Um, and then we get into what we call flat patterns, which are more like folding uh, shapes, folding shapes, and then we get into the, the 3D objects rotated about one axis or and about two axes. So the one about two axes tend to be the hardest um, um, module for us because, or for students because they have to mentally rotate an object about one axis first and then about another axis and draw the final resting point. So if you look at something like this one, um, you have to keep track of where that yellow dot is because that's where your starting point is for, for your final um, solution. And you rotate about the blue axis for the blue first, which is 180 degrees about the X axis positive. So counterclockwise. And once you rotate that 180 degrees, then you have to go positive 90 degrees about the Z axis and draw the final resting point. Um, so, um, and then our final module is this assembly, which is kind of based on uh, the concept of a soma cube. Um, and so if you know what a soma cube, it's like a puzzle that has, I think, seven pieces. And um, there's, I think, over 200 and maybe around 250 different unique solutions to solve the soma cube. And what we do in this ac activity is we provide them with a base structure and a part, and they need to manipulate and rotate the parts and fit them and complete the soma cube. So this one's easy because it's only one piece that they have to fit in, but then we get um, well, more, well, these are still one piece. Let's get to the harder ones. Um, so then you might have three pieces that you need to like 3D Tetris, rotate them and fit them in to complete the soma cube. So this one is sort of our capstone module to test all their spatial skills. Um, Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here and go back to my presentation, I guess. Um, so uh, I can share these slides with you guys later if you'd like. Um, this just shows you the different app modules and starts goes through a little bit about the grading algorithm. So we already talked about a bunch of the different modules. So let me get through this. Um, in terms of best practices, what we've learned is that um, the app is very useful to sign for homework. Um, and it, you know, most, most everyone we know, even at the high school level, has access to a, a device. Um, the app is available on Android and Apple phones and tablets, as well as advanced Chromebooks that have touchscreens. Um, it's not a web-based app because we wanted the touchscreen interface. Um, and so it, it does require a phone or a tablet, um, but we've, we've not run into any problems with students not really having access to devices. Um, one of the things that uh, we recommend is that, um, well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually go, go on to stuff. Uh, we want to kind of encourage persistence, as I mentioned. And what we found is the students that need the most help often take hints and peaks too early. So uh, we're now in the process of implementing better hints within the app. Um, 
like, uh, let me see, I don't know if I, I showed you something like that, but sometimes not only does it say that you, you know, you're missing some lines or you're, you have this many percentages, but sometimes it could be like, you might want to check your front view because something's wrong in the front view. So it helps students kind of target where their errors are. So we're working on that development right now that will be in before it's fall, fall, fall uh, semesters and stuff. Um, so I guess I won't get into the, the, the real um, way I've implemented it because I'm running out of time, but if you are interested in, in, um, in this, we do have some lecture activities that go hand in hand with some of the, um, um, the modules. So we have uh, actual PowerPoints and we have some hands-on activities. So an example of a hands-on activity that we do, which you can't really do right now remotely with remote instruction, unless you get students to purchase some of these uh, materials, but, um, th but uh, when we do it in our labs and stuff face-to-face, -face, it's a really good activity for them to work together. So we have a bunch of different hands-on activities on our website. Um, so this is the information about how to get a free teacher account. I think what we'll do is I'll have uh, Steve help me disseminate it to you guys so that you guys can download, uh, log in, make a, a teacher account download the app and if you log in with this invite code then you'll have access to all the assignments and you can play with it and then i left an email at the bottom info oops info at egrove education um if you know if you run into complications as you're trying to install the app um so all i want to say is that once you play with the app we're making it because of covid we decided to make it free for all anyone who wants to use it in their classrooms um, right now. So I don't know how much more time you have left in your semesters, but if you wanna test it out with your students, uh, we can set up a course for you. And uh, we'll, we'll honor this through the summer. So if you teach any summer school classes um, or also wanna test it out, we can do that as well. And then starting fall, um, we will, so this, is, this free offer is only available through, through the summer. Um, so I guess that's all I have right now. Um, I'm open to answer any questions that you guys might have about the app. Hello, let me share this. This is Steve Dykus. I found using the app, I like the idea of using a stylus because I'm using my finger. I couldn't see the grid half the time. Mm -hmm. I kept, the lines weren't really coming out really well. So, but it's really cool. Really enjoyed this. I wish I could have had this when I was in the classroom. It would have helped a lot of students, I feel. Thank you. Yeah, well, this this Sorry, is go, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, how much is the the app uh, regular Normally? cost? So um, that's that's a, a good question. Where we have um, it depends if you're purchasing the app for your students. Um, so I'm I'm in a college environment, and it you know it's typical for an instructor to choose some technology in the class, and the students pay for it, like a textbook or an app. Um, so it's it's normally twenty dollars a student. Um, but we do have some uh, pay, uh, pay scale that if you are paying as an institution that the cost goes down uh, depending on the number of, of student licenses that you purchase. So it goes down from there, basically. And especially if we're in the high school age group, it, you know, it, it ends up going down a little bit more. So um, Is there an instructor cost? I mean, a different, a different for instructor? No, no, we're, we're giving, we give all instructors, instructors access. So like I'm giving you guys free access to this and the, 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 the reason, um, you know, actually you can download the app right now for free, but you only get the first like five activities where the grading algorithm works. And then after that, you have access to the curriculum, but you can't really get the grading to work. So uh, mm -hmm. some teachers have brought it into the classroom and do the first five activities and then they, they grade it themselves, like the students have to show them their submissions, which is, is painful. And the reason why we, we put the automatic grading in there to help teachers uh, in, uh, reduce the time to, to grade. But, um, but the, the, the students pay for it so that they can be included in a course and so that we could provide you with the statistics of how they're performing um, in, the, in the class. And uh, so we have some metrics that show whether they're being persistent um, and you can um, engage with them. I'm sorry, my dog is going crazy next to me right now. Um, that's the problem of working from home, right? Um, so anyway, uh, I, I, 
the, so the cost is really about being able to put, to do the data analytics and get you the grades and and be able to see how students are performing um, in a in a course basically. So, thank you. Yeah. Hey, this is Pete. If I could jump in with a, a question here, um, I'm wondering if uh, like I'm assuming that if I set it up for students, there's like a, a page where as the instructor, I can go to and look and it'll show me like a list of the kids that are in the group and right. what their level is or where they're at and their scores and whatnot. Yeah, so we do have a teacher interface that you can log into. So when you create the account and the instructions that will be creating you this interface. And if we do create a course for your students, you'll be able to go um, there and see who your students are that have registered properly. So, um, uh -huh. And because they all, uh, they also have to get onboarded and registered um, uh -huh. so that they're assigned into your course. And then um, from there, you can download right now. Uh, it's not fully integrated into like learning management systems, but you can download, download a CSV and upload into your learning management system. So cool. uh, we, we get you a lot of statistics. We could, you know, because it's a digitized app, we can get a lot of information. Um, we try to keep it at a high level, but the more information you want, we can also get you how they're doing on every single assignment as well, how mm -hmm. many hints they took, how many peaks they took. So um, we can let you know the ones that are, are, are peaking too much and need to, need to be reminded that they got to try a little bit harder. So do you have any experience using this app with junior high students? I teach so, a feeder class that I think this, like, especially the early um, ones could be really useful for. Yeah. So we, we ideally would like to, um, we, we ideally would like to modify the um, assignments so that they don't get as difficult. Um, uh -huh. But uh, but we do have right now, once, since we made this offer during COVID-19, uh, somehow the, the news got on, I think it was a Project Lead the Way middle school uh, blog or something like that. And so we have about 40 middle schools using it right now. Oh, okay, and we cool. have Yeah, we have not heard any complaints about it. Um, yeah. So. It looks really similar to, I have just a couple, I, I introduce my seventh graders to just the general idea of orthographic projection and I give them some coloring assignments to do, color mm -hmm. the different faces, different uh, different colors. And, and it's, this looks like a cool and interactive way for them to go a lot further with the similar ideas and with much less paper. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to say that, I mean, when I first started developing this, uh, my kids were in elementary school, they're now all in high school. And, um, but, you know, I brought, I brought some of this into the like fifth and sixth grade classes. And um, definitely some students are still struggling because, you know, mm -hmm. we have the full, we still have college students that are struggling with this, sure. you know, but, but uh, there are definitely some students that just have a knack, you know, with all the gaming that's going on and Minecraft and stuff that they, they uh -huh. were able to do this, this very well. Um, I do think that some of the assignments might be um, challenging, especially I don't think in middle school, if you teach about hidden lines, maybe and the dash uh -huh. lines, but, but you can skip those exercises. And, you know, the, in general, I think they'll find that it's, um, it's very engaging. They love it. We've, we've surveyed a lot of students about, where they do the app and they're all, you know, they, they do it while waiting for the bus, while waiting for their laundry to get done, you know, and then some <laughs> of them even admit that they do it while they're sitting on the toilet and, you know, all those things. So <laughs> people really yeah. do enjoy it. It's fun. It looks really cool. Thanks. Lily, thank you so much for presenting this. And um, does everybody have her, her website and the link so you can get this if you want to try it out? Um, I've downloaded the app already. Right. Yeah, so, but I, um, you do, in order to get full access, because like I said, you've mm -hmm. downloaded it, so you're probably only getting access to the demo mode. So I'm going to actually send you uh, my email address, and then you can you can um, email me. So it's in the in the chat. It's lelly at egrove.education. If you guys cool. email me, then I will, I can send you either the slides or just that one page that showed the instructions and the, the code that you could get, um, which I think Steve did already um, in order to get full access to all the assignments. Perfect. Cool. Thank and we'll, you. Post, we'll post it on our website too, so everybody can see that. So Lily, thank you so much. Thank you. Of course, you wanted to be connected to uh, to Mike and Alan that are on this call, and I'll make those I'll make that virtual connection with you too because they're down in, in Southern California or the Central Coast area. Great. Um, 
with their yeah. colleges down there and, and then the other feeder schools. So this will yeah, be and I, I did want to say that if you have any friends or colleagues that aren't on this call and they might be interested as well, feel free to share it with them. Like right now is our opportunity, is their opportunity. I don't know if, you know, those of you that are in high school are probably still have some time left in the, in the semester, school year or whatever. So uh -huh. uh, pass it along. Um, and we're here to support whatever they need for their courses. So. Cool. Thank you again. Thank hey, you. I have one thing to report and then we'll open it up and then we'll be done. So we've already started on last week's call, for those of you that are on it, seven teachers actually signed up or said they wanted to work with Parallax on a virtual tour. And we've had some behind the scenes things going on. So we've already got that in place and it's moving forward. We're doing it kind of pioneering, see if it works. And we'll be able to report in about a week or two how this went. And um, we have one or two other industry partners that have an interest in doing some tours as well. So I'll probably be sending something out, hopefully before week's end, about some other opportunities. And if any of you teachers want to be involved with your students and participate, jump on it quickly and we'll move forward. So with that said, we're almost to the end of our hour of being together. Is there any other things going on on your mind or items that we could communally talk about and help each other with or things you need support with? I'm getting back into um, teaching some classes. So I'm starting to work on putting together some, some online stuff and it's um, gonna be for the, the kids that are really excited about this kind of thing, like you said, elementary school students that kind of have a knack for it. Um, so I'm talking to some kids whose parents are already engineers or graphic artists and, and we're diving headlong into fusion. And I think this would be a, a good uh, way to, for the kids to, apart from dad looking over their shoulder to really play with it and um, get dirty with it before they um, dive into CAD. Thanks, Eric. Anybody else got any burning issues out there right now as we're getting near the end of the school year and some things are starting to settle in? Well, I think silence is a good thing. I mean, <laughs> six, six or seven weeks ago, we had a lot of discussion going on back and forth on what we need to do and how we need to work together. So if there's nothing else at this time, um, remember we, we're recording this and we'll post it on the, uh, the, the website that we posted in the past. And uh, we'll make these available to if you wanna watch it again. And you have my email address if you have any questions or concerns. And I guess next, next Tuesday, same time, 3.30 in the afternoon and we'll rock from there. Sounds good. Thanks for organizing, Steve. Uh, you're welcome. Thank this you, Lily great. and Roy, for the presentations. They're fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.